Hi everyone, and thank you again for joining me on this lesson where we are going to explore the properties of equivalent ratios. So in this lunchtime scenario, we have Kevin and Christina who are both ordering lunch to bring back to their co-workers. Kevin orders six hamburgers and two tacos, while Christina orders three hamburgers and one taco. And we want to explore the ratio of hamburgers to tacos in this situation. So with this ratio in mind, let's regroup both Kevin and Christina's orders. Doing this allows us to see that for both Kevin and Christina, for every three hamburgers ordered, there is one taco. So even though Kevin ordered twice the amount of food that Christina did, the ratios are still equivalent because for every three hamburgers, there is one taco, in this case, a three to one ratio. So now let's move forward and explore the questions. What does it mean when two ratios are equivalent? How can I show that two ratios are equivalent? And where can I get one of those tacos? <laughs> kidding, kidding. So now let's get some practice in determining whether or not two ratios are equivalent. In this case, we have the ratio of 4 to 5 and the ratio of 12 to 15, and we want to see if they are equivalent ratios. Now, a ratio can be written in fraction form with a numerator and a denominator. So we're going to go ahead and start by transforming these two ratios into fractions. Doing this allows us to determine if the two ratios are equivalent because we know that two fractions are equivalent if their cross products are equal. So we're going to go ahead and find those cross products and see if they're equal. And if they are, then we can say that these are equivalent fractions. So let's start by cross multiplying. And we'll start out with 5 times 12, which we know equals 60. And then we'll find our second cross product by multiplying 4 and 15. And that product is also equal to 60. So notice that in this case, our cross products were equal. And that means that we can make the determination that these two ratios are equivalent. And we can justify that statement because, as we just showed, the cross products are equal. <laughs> cool. So now let's go ahead and take a look at one last example. In this case, we want to see if the ratio 4 to 7 and the ratio 6 to 12 are equivalent. Just like in the last example, we can start off by converting the ratios to fractions with a numerator and a denominator. Then we can go ahead and find the cross products and see whether or not they are equal. We could start with 4 times 12, whose product is 48, and then compare that to the second cross product, 7 times 6, whose product is 42. Notice here that in this example, the cross products of 48 and 42 are not equal. Therefore, we can conclude that these two ratios are not equivalent. So now that we have explored both the concept and the procedures involved with exploring equivalent ratios, you can now extend this understanding to future problems. Thanks again for stopping by, everyone, and I will see you soon. <laughs> cool. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Thank you again for stopping by. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, please click that link below and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Leave a thumbs up and a comment on this video. We could really use your support. And also, don't forget to sign up for our weekly newsletter. When you join our mailing list, you get a free ebook download as well as weekly resources, tips, insights, and some cool contests and giveaways as well. So don't miss out on that. There's a link on this page you can click to join the mailing list and that's all you have to do. So thank you so much again for stopping by and for all your support and I will see you all next time. Bye.